Okay, this is the P3 paper from June 2022. It's question number eight. Uh, if we look at all of it there, we can see that this is an exponentials question, but particularly we're going to be using calculus to find the maximum velocity. Well, that's going to be dv by dt equals zero. So we're going to be differentiating. We then need to do some work on integrating v and trying to work out what this t is. And finally, we finish off with some iterative formulae from the numerical methods, a little bit of fixed point iteration right at the very end. So let's go back and make a start to all of that. Get rid of all that stuff first of all. So first part says then, uh, let's just read through it, that figure four is a graph showing the velocity. Okay, and um, this velocity... Um, is where t stands for the number of seconds after the sprinter begins to run. And it says, find using calculus the maximum velocity. So if we've got part A, the V is equal to, yeah, now they're going to have, and we need to get used to this. Sorry, I can't write and uh, speak at the same time. We're going to have, apologies, um, some quite complicated exponential functions here and they're doing this on purpose they're just testing our concentration levels which you just saw mine aren't very good and our confidence levels at just being able to work with these things the first thing we're going to do is to try and differentiate this function and we know how to differentiate e if i've got y equals e to the kx and i want to differentiate it it just becomes k e to the kx so that's all I'm going to be doing for both of these, but they're just not very nice things to be looking at when we're doing it. But just maintain your concentration. So when we're doing this, differential of 12 disappears. The differential of e to the t minus 10 is e to the t minus 10 multiplied by the differential of that, which is 1, so it's just the same function. It's not actually e to the t minus 10, it's minus e to the t minus 10. So that's the differential of that bit. And then when we're doing the next bit, it's still going to be e to the minus 0.75t, but it's multiplied by minus 0.75. So I've got minus, minus 0.75 times 12 e to the minus 0.75t. So th that's a, in a nutshell what they're trying to do here is to throw us by having not very nice functions here, but actually that's not really that difficult. It's confusing, but it shouldn't be difficult for us. And focus, I'm trying to focus while I'm speaking at the same time, but try and make sure you're not making any copying errors. Keep checking back to see if you haven't missed out a minus or anything else like that. But that is dv by dt. Once we've got that then, we're trying to find the maximum, so at maximum velocity, dv by dt is equal to naught. So this thing is going to be equal to naught. And again, here, following on from exactly the same sort of thought process. Gosh, I'm getting messages and alarms going off all over the place here. Uh, but still, I'll try and focus. When I'm doing this, even though this looks horrible, all I'm going to be using is the idea of um, powers. Let, let's do it rather than talk about it. I've got 9e to the minus 0.75t is equal to e to the t minus 10 there. And if I want to divide that down here, if I want to divide that down, all I'm going to get is 9 is equal to e to the t minus 10 divided by e to the minus 0.75t. Well, what do we do when we divide powers? We simply subtract them away from each other. So this is actually going to be e to the t minus 10 minus minus 0 0.75. So in other words, plus 0 0.75t. And I can combine all that. I'm going to get 9 equals e to the 1.75t minus 10. So again, I'm saying to you, it's confusing, but not difficult. You just need to keep your focus here. And the whole point about doing this, I've said this in previous videos, when I'm trying to do that, I want to get to E equals something. Just a straightforward E equals it. Because then, at this stage now, I can just log both sides. And if I log both sides here, I'm going to get that log 9 is equal to 
1.75t minus 10, and now hopefully it's dead straightforward. We can relax a little bit to try and get our t. Log 9 plus 10 is equal to 1.75t, and so t is equal to log 9 plus 10, all divided by 1.75 and whatever that works out to be. And when I'm getting my answer there, let's just go back and check. What did they say to me about T? Oh, they didn't. They said find V. So again, this is, this is good practice of, of showing. I always go back and just check I've answered the question. I haven't yet. So I'm going to keep the value that I got on my calculator. I've done 6.97. Still got the value on my calculator. V max, what I'm actually looking for, is putting that into the function now. So it's E, to, again, be careful here, it's 6.97 minus 10 minus 12E to the minus 0 0.75 times 6.97. So just take your time, plug that all into the calculator, being careful, comes out as being 11.887, or well, I made it 11.887, which I then rounded up to 11.9 make sure I include my units and does it say anything no does it, well I can't see that it says anything about decimal places or significant figures so 11.9 seems a sensible answer to give there for that one when we're going through right the the idea of this complicated but okay is going to continue now for part b it says, um, given that the sprinter runs 100 metres in T seconds and T is this limit here, if the integral of V dt equals 100, OK, we're going to have to integrate. But notice we won't have to find an actual answer. We've just got to try and see if we can get that coming out, which looks incredibly complicated. So I'm not going to let that put me off. Absolutely. Just trying to put you off here and just... Maintain your confidence. It's good. They're, they're, they're trying all sorts of different things in this paper. And one of them is, are you resilient? Are you going to be able to go through and do something where it doesn't look very nice and you, you panic or you, you know, you're not convinced of your own um, academic abilities here? Well, you, you know, get resilient and, and have a go at doing this one. So we've got to do the integral between t and naught of this function, which is 12 minus e to the t minus 10 minus 12e to the minus 0 0.75 t dt equals 100. I'll just make a quick note about I'm not the neatest person in the world, but the neater I can do this, the less likely I am to make a mistake with copying errors or anything else like that, and the easier it is for the examiner to actually go through and be able to mark this. So what about the integral of e to the kx then? Well, if I'm integrating e to the kx, it becomes e to the kx, but this time I'm dividing by k, aren't I? So again, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do that process um, all the way through this. I'm not gonna spend ages explaining it. We'll just crack on and see what we can do. So if we're gonna integrate this whole thing, then well, the integral of twelve. That's fine. That's just twelve t. The integral of e to the uh, t minus 10, it'll be e to the t minus 10 divided by 1, divided by the differential of t, which is 1. So that's fine. That's no problem at all. The next one is going to be minus 12. It's going to be e to the minus 0.75t, but we've now got to divide by minus 0.75 and that's it. Okay, well, that's all right. That's not too bad then. All between t and 0 equals 100. Let's tidy that up then. So I've got 12t, oops, sorry, 12t minus e to the t minus 10. And now minus 12 divided by that, that all works out to be plus 16e to the minus 0.75t. All between t and 0. Really having to focus myself here to make sure that I don't make any Celia as I'm going through, that I'm not copying anything down wrong, that the negatives and the positives are all working out to be okay. It's hard to do that and to talk to you guys, but, you know, I'm hopefully getting there. So put T in, that's going to give me 
12t minus e to the t minus 10 plus 16e to the minus 0.75t. And all of that, I'm not going to look back yet, but that's part of that answer that I was trying to get to, most of those bits. So it's that minus sticking zero in it. And don't think zero will automatically give us zero. Go through and look at each term individually. 12 times zero, yeah, that's zero. But e to the t minus 10 now is going to be minus e to the minus 10 there. And then plus 16 e to the zero. Well, I'm going to write e to the zero, but e to the zero is one, isn't it? So we get all of that equals 100. Now, just be careful. Don't be too tempted to um, to jump straight to my answer here. Okay, let's just do what we would normally do. That's 12t minus e to the t minus 10 plus 16e to the minus 0.75t. I haven't done anything to that. But then that's minus 16 equals 100. I think I'd now say, well, actually, I will now. Go and have, let's have a look at the answer, what we're trying to get to. Um, t equals a 12th of... All of that stuff, yeah, okay, no, no, that's pretty much what I've got here. So I'm going to get 12t equals, and I'm going to put everything else on the other side then. So I've got e to the t minus 10 minus 16e to the minus 0.75t, and then plus 116. So what I've got to do is to now go and just check that, if I missed one, oh, yeah, no, I have actually there, sorry. Apologies, let me just... That's the whole point, whole point of checking, um, is that here, I'd missed the e to the minus 10, hadn't I? And that's actually going to be plus e to the minus 10 there. So if I'm doing that bit there, that's going to be... Let's say apologies about that. It's hardly surprising. I meant to make as I was going somewhere through that there then. I've got that so far, so e to the t minus 10, the minus 16 there, the minus of the e to the minus 10. So t is going to be a 12th of all of that. I'm going to leave it like that. I'll, I'll go and compare them, but I'm, I don't necessarily need to put it in the same order as they've got it. And it looks a bit more authentic, I guess, to the examiner that I have actually painfully gone through and done all that. Now, I don't think I have actually made a mistake here, but if I had done... Well, sort of, I, I guess there, that I, I, um, if I'm being perfectly honest, I missed that bit out just a minute ago, hadn't I? So going back and checking, you might then be able to say, oh, right, quacky, yeah, it's just that, that little bit that I've missed there. And you can go back and put that in. And remarkably, that actually is the answer that they're trying to get. Whew. Okay, let's keep going. So really testing our stamina at this stage. You know, this is question eight. We've been going for... Quite a while, I would imagine, on the actual exam yourself, obviously. Um, what have we got for the last bit? So use the iterative formula now. Yeah, I know how to do these. I'm, it's a fairly standard sort of approach to do these. Um, T1 is equal to 10. I'm just going to stick that in and I'll get that value. And then for the rest of this, I'm just going to be repeating the iteration, I would imagine, over and over again. But let's do the first bit. So there's the iterative formula. If T1 is 10, can you find T2? And to four decimal places. Right, yeah, that's not too bad. Let's just be careful with what we're doing here. So C part one. It says that T to the N plus one is equal to a 12th of... And again, I always make mistakes when I'm actually copying things down more than pretty much anything else that I do wrong. So once I've actually written this out... Oops, e. Well, there you go. There's one already. <laughs> Tn uh, to the Tn minus 10 minus e to the minus 10 there. The pause each time will be me just stopping and checking. So, yeah, yeah, that looks like the, the question. Right, T1 is equal to... Goodness sake, right, I'm getting tired. T1 is equal to 10. T2 is equal to... So when I do these ones especially with this first one, I'm just going to show what I'm doing here. The examiner needs to know, you don't want to just chuck everything into the calculator straight away, that what I need to do is put T1 in to get T2, put T2 in to get T3, put T3 in to get T4. That's the iterative process. I need to model that with the first one. So putting T and, or sorry, T1 to be equal to 10, 
minus 0.75 times 10. Well, I'm going to save myself a little bit of time. That's minus 7.5 there. Um, plus e to the 10 minus 10 is e to the 0. So I'm going to put e to the 0 there. Minus e to the minus 10. And then actually evaluate that and see what that comes to. Well, uh, if I do that on the calculator, it comes to 9.74 to four decimal places, 93. And I've explained how I've done that for that first bit. So for part two then, what does part two actually say? It says, right, can we actually find the time taken given that they want the answer to four decimal places? What I need to understand by that then, and I'll explain to the examiner in a second, but what I need to understand by that is if I put in T2, T3, T4, and I just keep going with them, as I'm doing them, what should happen to my answer is that it will get closer and closer to the supposed answer and to four decimal places, eventually it will stop changing the number of decimal places. Once it stops changing for four decimal places, then I can finish. I can say that that's my time that I'm doing it. Uh, that will maybe be a bit more simply explained when I actually do it. So um, to say to the examiner, we need to repeat until approximation is accurate to 4dp. Now, as far as I'm concerned, in terms of actually working this out now, I'm not going to go through that bit again and put T3, put the values in, put the values in, put the values in. I've already, I've already shown that I know how to do that. So I'm literally just going to stick T2 into the calculator, see what comes out. It comes out as being 9.73062 if I stop after five decimal places. Right. Um... If I look at that one there, that was 7493. This is 7306. So it hasn't finished correcting yet. So let's now do it to the next value. That's 9.72942. Note still hasn't gone there. Do it to the next one. That's 9.7293. So we can see we're getting there because look now. That's starting to be accurate to three decimal places there. The 729 and the 729 haven't changed. When I do T6, I actually get 9.7293. Actually, to be fair, that was 33 three there because that's 33 three there. So not only is it staying to four decimal places, it's actually staying to five decimal places there. So now, because there's been no change... In the fourth decimal place there, it doesn't matter how much it changes further on down the line. It's not going to impact to four decimal places. So I can now say, therefore, T equals 9.7293. And I know that that's accurate to four decimal places. In terms of how I'm doing that on the calculator, if you go to one of my how-to videos, I'll go through doing the iterative process on the calculator so that it doesn't take too long. You can just keep plugging it in and putting it back in, plugging it in, putting it back in. But there are some whizzy ways that the calculator will help us. At the moment, at the time of me recording this, they're still um, allowed for us to do. So I'll show you that on one of my how-to videos. Go and have a look at that if you need to. But that's the answer to question number eight. Big old question there. But hopefully all those parts made sense.